and no retribution for any whistleblowing, if that's the right word, but um, for them if they come out. And you know, he was so strong uh, about Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton was, um, when all the scandal broke with Monica Lewinsky. Um, what were you thinking when all of that was happening? And maybe you already had a suspicion that he was perhaps doing the same thing. Um, when I read that uh, about him um, wanting, that he didn't care about the affair, I think this is how it went, but he didn't care about Bill Clinton's indiscretions, he cared about the truth. Laughable to me. Uh, because he certainly was leading this double life, is leading this double life. And um, uh, it's, it's very hypocritical in my estimation, so. Well, and even when the initial picture came out, he said that the relationships were all consensual while he was either separated or already divorced from you. But you're saying that is flat out not true. It is not true. He, he's he been doing this a long time. And that's very hard to say. When the women contacted you, what did they say? Um, out of the blue, I received a message on Facebook um, and uh, that was my first question is why now? Um, these women have been been having affairs with him for years and years. Why all of a sudden are they reaching out to me now? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think some of them just got tired of of him using the same tactics uh, of him really taking advantage of him lying about me because apparently he was lying about some of these women to his now fiance, as I understand it, um, whom by the way I have spoken with. I have shared information with her and she's very nice but if I can keep this from happening to one more family then it's worth it. He has talked about not running for re-election. Do you think he should resign? You know that's really not my choice to make. That's something between God and Joe and I hope that Joe will. Uh, I'm very faithful. My faith is what has gotten me through this and so I hope that Joe will really dig deep and do the right thing. Uh, I'm not sure what that is for him. I do know that being the congressman for the sixth district of Texas is his love. It's his first love. And so the people in his district have definitely gotten 150% from him. That is no question. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wish his wives had gotten the same type of loyalty. Yeah, so you talk about, it. So when you heard that he was resigning, what was your what was your thought? I'm not resigning, but um, that he's not going to run for re-election. Not but he had just of. announced that about a month ago that he was running for re-election. Right but now, he I guess is saying, I feel like enough people have lost faith in me, and they have reason to. You know, I'm at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he really cares about that, but. His son is the main priority. Jack is a very astute little boy, and uh, I think he's been having conversations with Joe about not running for quite some time. Mm. Jack has lived this for 12 years. That's all he's known is his dad as a congressman. And so when I heard it yesterday, I honestly sent Joe an email telling him how sad I was for him mm -hmm. because it is his passion. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of those memories started coming back of, you know, us dating and then finding out about the women and Jack being born. And there were some lovely times, but there weren't enough to offset the realities. What was the final straw that finally made you say, I'm, I'm done, I, I have to walk away? Because you struggled with it for years, right? I did. I filed for divorce two other times before the third time stuck. He, he always talked me out of it somehow. Uh, and that was my fault. That was my fault. My parents wanted me to divorce him. My children wanted me to divorce mm -hmm. him, my older children. Mm -hmm. um, but I, my faith is very strong and I made a covenant with Joe under the eyes of the Lord mm -hmm. and I meant it. When I said death do it till us, death to Sorry. Until death. Until death <laughs> us do part. I meant it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just 
saying the words and then thinking, you know, it doesn't count. I, I'm not made that way. So um, it, it, it was it was difficult. But I have to say the final straw was finding the sexually explicit video on his laptop. Mm -hmm. I, I, I very, he doesn't remember it this way, but Jack was there and he was in another room. But when I found it, I called Joe into uh, the office where I was and I just didn't say a word, just said, I want to show you something. And I started running the video and I said, what is that? And mm -hmm. I won't repeat what he said, but, uh, and I, I just, it was, God just came over me because I very calmly said, I want you to pack your things and leave. Mm -hmm. And he did. He went into Jack and said, I've done a very bad thing and uh, I'm, I'm leaving. And that was it. Why do you think he would record videos like that and the sexually explicit text messages and all that being a congressional leader and knowing that perhaps at some point somebody might get mad? Did he just never think that anyone was going to speak up against him? Uh, I can only give you my perspective on that. I can't really speak for Joe, but, but my contention is that Joe is sick and Joe needs help. And this is not something he can overcome in a day or a month or a year. This is going to take real, you know, concerted counseling and spiritual help, in my opinion. Uh, and some of these women make themselves available to him because of his position. So if he's not in Congress but is a lobbyist, I don't know if it really changes that much, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. I really don't. So I hope that Joe gets help. I really do. And I hope another family doesn't have to go through this. Do you think it's the power that has that corrupts? Because it seems that now more women are coming out about congressional leaders, men, uh, men and women, in, or men in politics specifically. Um, do you think that it's the power that has well, made corrupted them? Let me just say, I don't think that it's just men in Washington. I think that women uh, are playing a part in this too. And I, I'm not perfect. I never have been. I never will be. Um, it is truly by God's grace that I am standing today and that I'm even sitting here talking with you because three years ago, there's no way I could have done this. I'm a fairly strong person, but over the years, I really lost my self-confidence. And uh, so I'm coming back is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So I think there is some culpability with both men and women in Washington. I do think that the parties and the traveling and the ability to have staff help them in whatever indiscretions might be happening um, makes it easier for them, for sure. Why did you decide to finally talk <laughs> after all these years? Um, this is this day honestly has been a very long time coming and I don't want to get emotional uh, it's been a pretty emotional couple of days mm -hmm. and years for me and my family sure. uh, but the lies that he would tell these women to get them to interact with him uh, were wrong uh, they were false he was telling the exact same lies to my family and people believed him because of his position and his power. Hmm. My own sister believed Joe Barton over me. That's hard to swallow. And I have been patient. I have waited on God. And I truly believe that he has put everything in place at this time uh, so that I could come forward and really give my side of the story. Okay. Joe will tell you it's not the truth, but I am telling it to you as I know it and uh, as honestly as I know it. Do you feel a sense of vindication? Uh, yeah, I do. In fact, the day that I found out about the story, I, I sent him an email saying just that. Uh, but 
it wasn't my place to tell this story. I mean, in God's timing, it came out, and it came out the way it was supposed to. Would I ever wish this on him? No. But he and the ladies he was involved with, they're the ones who created it. I didn't. Jack didn't. Joe's family didn't. Um, so I really feel like it, it was the right time. It's not easy, but I do think it was the right thing to do. So, What was his response when you, when you sent him that email that said, I feel vindicated? You... Well, what I told him in the email when the story first broke was that I found it humorous that he apologized to his constituents, but he didn't apologize to his family. Mm. He didn't apologize to his older children, to Jack, to my children from my first marriage, or to me as his ex-wife, who he was committing the, the affairs on, basically. Uh, I, he had never apologized. And finally, Monday morning, even though I didn't really care for the way he did it, he surprised me at work and came and apologized face to face. He did? Mm -hmm. He did. What did he say to you? Um, well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep, keep that, that private. Be between us. But sure. he also apologized to Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, during that conversation, I did ask him to call my mother uh, and my two older children and apologize to them. Uh, but I don't think he's done that yet. Do you think that this, well, how do you think this will change him, or will it? I don't know. Only God knows the answer to that. No. I hope it will, and I hope that no woman, family, person has to go through this. I can tell you the last, you know, five to seven years have been almost hellish for me, and uh, today is a new day. The healing begins now, so thank you for letting me tell my story.